Looking good. Filters off. Hey! Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's been almost a month since one of the most memorable experiences of my life absorbing the total solar eclipse. In this video, I want to share with you my story about this event, some videos that I captured, mistakes I made, and of course, pictures that I got. As a recap, on April 8, 2024, millions of people witnessed the total solar eclipse that occurs when the Moon passes in front of the Sun as observed from Earth. If you stand in the middle of the pass, you can see the totality when the Moon fully covers the Sun and we can see the corona with the naked eye. Besides the corona, there are many different phenomena that occur during the eclipse, which I will cover later in this video. On the screen, you're looking at the path of totality in the United States. I live in Williamsburg, Virginia, and the partial eclipse was visible there. However, I wanted to see the totality as I had never seen it before. My girlfriend and I were planning to watch the eclipse from reserved campsites in Indiana or Ohio, but weather made adjustments to plans. Eventually, we were watching the eclipse from Colebrook in New Hampshire. I think we arrived there a little over two hours prior to the beginning of the partial phase, so I quickly had to set up my telescopes. At the beginning, I was planning to use only one telescope and camera to take some images of the eclipse but I ended up with uh, setting up three different rigs, so my main imaging rig was Skywatcher 80D telescope with full-frame Canon 6D Mark II camera, uh, then I had 122mm APO refractor from SV Boini and a crop sensor from Canon that uh, would give me a really close look at the sun and in particular solar prominences. And the third setup included uh, just uh, an equatorial HEQ5 Pro mount with three different lenses. So there are three lenses, one 24mm focal length, 50mm focal length and 135mm focal length with Canon EOS R camera uh, with it. So SV Boni telescope and 135mm um, lens, those two were controlled with uh, software Orchestrator Pro app. So for those who don't know, this app allows you to automate your solar eclipse imaging session and basically uh, as long as you're tracking the sun properly, the app does everything itself, takes uh, specific uh, exposures at a specific time. And the trick when you set up the imaging script in this app is you need to know your location in order to uh, set a proper script with exposures captured at a specific time. So the thing is, uh, since I didn't know my location until Monday morning, I was basically creating scripts on site, but I even got a chance to test out those scripts a couple of times, so everything was working good. Uh, 24 and 50 millimeter uh, lenses, those two I was planning to use just like in time-lapse mode for only maximum phase of the solar eclipse. Then um, Skywatcher 80D telescope I was planning to control manually as I was hoping to get as many exposures as I could. Also while setting up I was really surprised how many people came over and they were asking me different questions about the eclipse telescope, so like just astronomy related uh, questions. I really wish I could spend more time answering those questions. As I tried to explain to people, I was busy focusing myself and doing like some final preparations for the solar eclipse that actually I was like preparing for the eclipse for the last maybe two or three months constantly. I, every day I spend uh, some time uh, preparing the, to the eclipse, reading some material, watching lectures, practicing. So thank you guys for understanding and sorry if I didn't answer all your questions that you had. So the partial phase of the eclipse began as any different partial solar eclipse that you could see. As we were getting closer to the maximum phase, you could see some different things uh, were happening on the ground. So the first thing you could notice is that it became much colder than it was at the beginning of the eclipse. By the way, the weather was really good. Uh, bright and clear sky, no clouds, nothing. And uh, it was so warm actually there, so I was wearing just a t-shirt. But by the time as we were getting closer and there were minutes until the totality, I had to put my jacket on because uh, it was pretty chilly out there. So second one, I don't know how to describe it in details, but like I really enjoyed the lighting ambience that uh, like was surrounding us uh, minutes before the total eclipse started. Um, if you'd look at the sun to the naked eye, it was looking like pretty much the same sun, but you could say that it was dimmer than usual and uh, it felt like somebody just uh, like put a filter on your eyes. The color shades, everything was like looking a bit cooler and it really felt unusual like you're locating 
like not on the earth but on a different planet so that was really awesome so the third thing i noticed also minutes before the totality is the nature became really quiet no wind no uh sounds from animals nothing it was just so quiet and calm and i think even people uh, on site they were like talking a bit quieter than usual and i think we're always just waiting for the moment of diamond ring appearance and the totality then but it was like the feeling was so good and I, I, even now like uh, talking about this i have goosebumps uh, rem like remembering um, all the things that happened uh, prior to the totality so fourth one is observing shadow bands and this also was a cool effect of raining shadows on the ground i think one of my cameras caught it and if it did i'm just gonna put it uh this fragment of the video on the screen right now so yeah shadow bands was also a cool thing to notice so as i said earlier i used eclipse orchestrator pro software and this software also has really nice and awesome uh, voice prompts uh, like 10 minutes to go five minutes to go filters of voice prompt was the one i was waiting for and once i heard this uh, voice prompt filters off i quickly took off all the filters and i was just about to start taking images with ADD telescope as i saw like with the naked eye uh, the appearance of the diamond ring. So when preparing for the eclipse, I saw lots of presentations and lectures about a solar eclipse and uh, many people were mentioning that uh, some of the eclipse chasers, like first time eclipse chasers, people just forget to do uh, lots of stuff, lots of easy stuff like taking filters off, uh, taking images and etc. So I was one of these people that like the beauty of the diamond ring so stunned me that uh, I even forgot to take images for a moment. I was just enjoying the event and uh, I think this is the most important part uh, of observing the total solar eclipse. But I quickly came back to my feelings and uh, uh, started taking images with uh, shutter release cable. So I got some nice shots of the second contact and then basically the totality began.
So you just saw some moments of totality from my observation location and now let's uh, take a look at the results that I got. I haven't processed all the images I captured yet, but I finished working with the most important image I was hoping to get. And this is a deep look at the solar corona captured with my 80D telescope, basically the main imaging setup that I was hoping uh, to get images with. The image you're looking at right now was captured through Skywatcher 80D telescope with Canon 6D Mark II camera. This shot is a result of stacking and blending together 130 separate images captured at different exposure times during the totality. And now let's quickly cover mistakes that I made. So first mistake, I still don't know how it happened, but during the totality I noticed that uh, the camera on my SV Bonnie telescope became silent. So basically, as I told you at the beginning, this telescope was automated with Eclipse Orchestrator Pro app and I tested out the script a couple of times for uh, the totality phase, everything was working good. Uh, when partial phase began, the uh, camera was taking images of partial phases properly, but yeah, during the totality I noticed that the camera became silent. I quickly realized that there was no point to do anything like going to the settings, uh, doing something uh, with uh, the camera of the app, but what I decided to do is to close and reopen the app on the mini PC and uh, reconnect the camera. So as a result, I only got a few shots of solar prominences and uh, I think I maybe got one or two shots of diamond ring with a 122 millimeter telescope. So those images were not processed yet and if I can do something with these images, I will of course post them on Instagram or my webpage on AstroBean, so subscribe to those pages if you want to see any updates. Um, so that, yeah, that was the first mistake and I still don't know how and why it happened. The second mistake... Uh, was also connected to the first one and the mistake is distracting myself to the problem. So yes, I knew I couldn't do anything with my uh, SV Bonnie telescope, but I still decided to like close the app, reopen it. While I was doing it, I missed appearance of Bailey beads on the third contact. And basically when I was back to my 80 telescope, I think I only got a couple of shots of the diamond ring during the third contact, but I missed all the shots of Bailey beads on the third contact I was hoping to get. Third mistake was pretty stupid, I think. So yeah, as I told you, my third setup included three different lenses and 24 and 50 millimeter lenses, those two were taking some interval shots. So when I was focusing these lenses on the sun, it was so overexposed. Like, I, of course I used solar filter, but sun was still overexposed, so I couldn't see uh, solar edges. So what I had to do is to close aperture on both of these lenses in order to uh, focus the sun properly. What I forgot to do is to open aperture after focusing on the sun. As a result, all the images, all the interval images that I were captured during the totality, all these images were just pinch black. Uh, 135 millimeter lens worked perfectly. Well, I wish the same would happen with SV Bonnie telescope, but um, they sold just experience that I learned and uh, that I will apply in the next solar eclipse in like 20 years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Overall, I'm more than happy with this experience. I saw my very first total solar eclipse. The observation location was perfect in terms of weather with no clouds passing during the totality. I don't think I'll ever forget the view of the sun through a binocular that I had with this huge solar prominence visible. And I even got a couple of images that uh, will be reminding me about this event. So it was a story of my solar eclipse experience. Please let me know in the comment section below if you also observed it and how this experience went for you guys. I really hope to see you in the future videos and until next time.